First news. In Pakistan, man accused of blasphemy shot dead in court. A Pakistani Muslim who was on trial for blasphemy has been shot dead while in court. It was not immediately clear how the murderer, who is identified as uh, Khalid Khan, managed to get to court on July 29th amid tight security. The attacker was sub- subsequently arrested. The suspect told police that Prophet Muhammad had ordered him to kill the man standing in trial, who the victim, his name is Tahir Nasim, because he belonged to the Ahmadi faith. The victim, Nasim, was arrested two years ago on blasphemy charges after claiming that he was Islam's prophet. While authorities have yet to carry out a death sentence for blasphemy, even mere accusations can cause riots or mob lynchings in Pakistan. So I go ahead. Okay. You go. I was just going to say that this is like really big news this week. Um, there have been major celebrities and huge crowds, and I wouldn't call it protests, but um, uh, gatherings in support of the murderer. Um, there's been massive support of the murderer of this man simply because of his supposed blasphemy. And this just goes to highlight once again how um, dire the situation is and how seriously people take something as simple as just claiming you're a prophet. I mean, that's not something I personally take seriously. I just, you know, brush you off. But go ahead. Right. So I... People need to understand that this is not just about, I mean, this is mainly about somebody being accused of blasphemy, going to court for it in Pakistan, and then this this really somebody trying to defend the honor of Muhammad coming and shooting the guy before even he sees the trial. That is the main story, but if you actually want to know how bad the situation is, that's not it, right? Like, that's not the entire point, because what... To get a better picture of wh- how big of a um, problem this kind of thinking is, is this reaction that Susanna mentioned, right? Because if this was just a story, then um, a lot of people would assume that, okay, yes, we know religious people, they have this fringe group of crazy people uh, who go out and shoot people who de- who you know, or do some crazy stuff like that when somebody um, offends them, especially when it comes to Islam, the vast majority of it, actually, right? Um, But I don't want to say the main story. The main indicator of how big of a problem this is is people's reaction to the guy who shot the the accused blasphemer in court because he's being, for for this murder... He's being celebrated as a hero, as somebody that you know did the honor honorable thing. Somebody, um, and it's very interesting because I was going to say somebody who didn't wait for due process, but due process on fucking what? On you know, on blasphemy, right? Which is there shouldn't even be a court for that, but obviously. But again, um, if you actually go look at the reactions to this in Pakistan and how much support this getting, like you would think that. The the wave of backlash towards this would be in defense of the m- person that just got shot, but no, not ap- apparently not in Pakistan. The main reaction, the 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 wave of people coming out and speaking a- out about this, are in support of the person that decided to end the man's life for his blasphemy. This is like, I mean, Pakistan, man. Compared to other like Islamic countries, it's just I don't know. It's like like sometimes I feel like it's a lost cause. I don't want to feel like that because I know there's a. It's very unfair to feel like that because there are a lot of atheists and secular activists in Pakistan that are risking so much mm-hmm. to make to make even the slightest amount of progress with a great deal of risks to themselves. Mm-hmm. So I think it's very unfair to them and the work that they're doing for us to lose hope, you know, and just give up on Pakistan like this. But man, sometimes 
sometimes and the problem with Pakistan is that you know the demographics is is not even in our favor, right? So I think when you look at Iran, you're like, okay, it's very bad, and you have an Islamic theocracy, but it seems like the vast majority of the people are 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 getting tired of all this bullshit, right? Maybe like with the demographics, we could we have some hope that there is some change in the future that somewhere could happen, right? With Saudi Arabia, we don't we can't really tell that much. It's really hard to get a good understanding of what people think uh, there. I mean, some there are some hopeful, some good polls coming out that gives us some hope about at least what the direction is. Um, but with Pakistan, man, I, it's not the government that scares you know the secularists and the atheists. It's not the government; it's the people, right? Again, no, hashtag not all. Um, but yeah, it is. It's a, it's a it's a nightmare. Oh, look at this. Faroz is actually is Faroz a Muslim? Yeah, Faroz is Pakistan is your worst nightmare. I think he's threatening us because his profile picture suggests that he's a Muslim. Um, no, he's not threatening us. I know him. Wait, why is he? Is this our Faroz? Yeah. Uh, oh, this is our first Faroz, what the hell? Why are you scaring us? What is this profile picture with the with the shahadat? Like, what the hell? He's like, I said, like, he, you're, what is this with this threatening messages and your new pro- Islamic profile picture? <laughs> Armin got triggered. Yeah, um, I got triggered. I want to say that in Pakistan, there have been instances, for example, the one with Asia Bibi, where the government even imprisons the person just to protect them from the mob. It's, it's more of a protection than a punishment like imprisonment in Pakistan. So that really proves how dangerous the mob can be in Pakistan. Right. By yeah. way, I, go ahead. Um, what is really interesting about this case is that the man who was murdered was a U.S. citizen. And... Um, according to another article I've read, the State Department said in a statement on July 30th that the man, Tahir Nassim, was a U.S. citizen and it had urged Islamabad to protect him. The statement said that Nassim had been lured from his home in Illinois by individuals who then used Pakistan's blasphemy laws to entrap him. Um, the U.S. government had called attention to senior Pakistani officials to his case since his detention in 2018, aiming to, quote, prevent the type of shameful tragedy that eventually occurred. Um, so it will be really interesting to see what an unfolds, um, given that he was a U.S. citizen and he was murdered in court. I wonder if um, the State Department is going to get further involved in that. Um but it's it's really shameful, man. And I don't I'm I'm never going to give up hope on Pakistan because I have so many people who reach out to me who are doing everything that they can to make a difference. Right. Even the tiniest things, the tiniest steps, the anything that they can do to improve the lives of the youth, the people around them, the next generation. Um it really inspires me. And unfortunately, they cannot do so as publicly as we do it, right? Um, they, I can't even bring attention to the people who are doing the work because I need to protect them, right? But there are people doing the work. And so I, the way that I help them in turn is by sharing stories like this so that more people are aware of what it's really like and what's really going on there and how um, actions like this are popularly supported um, so that other people understand exactly what people there are really facing. Okay, so I, I do want to read this because I, I really like it. Um, the, ma- the man Gaseous is saying this is a serious this is serious Islamic fragility. I really like Islamic fragility. Uh, you know how we have the term white fragility, which I think is actually a racist term against white people. This is actually a better use of the whole fragility. You know, this is because first of all, it's t- saying Islamic. It's not like if it was Muslim fragility, I think I wouldn't like it because it was yeah. 
uh, it would be grouping an entire, uh, it would be talking about an entire group of people as if they're all fragile. Um, I think Islamic fragility is like, like is, uh, is very, I mean, it's much more, um, it much, it's a much better use of the term because it's a real thing. I mean, think about it. Like when people say white fragility, like people asking questions and, que you know, not agreeing with you, they call that fragility. But then when you have, this is true fragility when you, you when your opinions actually gets your court date and not only that, somebody comes and gets so offended that has to shoot you to death, uh, you know, shoot you and kill you. This is, yeah. All right. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure um, credit to the uh, rephrasing or the term Islamic fragility goes to Jimmy Bangesh. Um, he oh, was, really? Yeah. He had a really good discussion on apostate prophet, I think this mm -hmm. past week. Um, talking about his experience and activism as an LGBT gay ex-Muslim and um, his he talked a lot about his own conception of Islamic fragility and how the left actually perpetuates Islamic fragility as if Muslims they, they have this lower expectation as if they cannot handle criticism right and so they jump in extra to protect them as if they are these fragile little people that can't handle you know a conversation um so if you're interested in that go check out that video i really enjoyed that conversation um but good use of that term uh the mad atheist mm -hmm. um do we have any other comments on this news yeah this is a good one um malik is saying malik is from pakistan and he's saying yes please don't give up on us even if there is a few of us left um and Farah is saying thanks susanna with a heart. I'm seeing uh, Christy's chat on my phone, but I'm not seeing it on the stream yet. I want to highlight Christy's comments, but I don't know why it's not showing up. So I'm going to try to figure it out. Okay. But for I Raul, see her comments. I see her on the phone, but not on the stream yet. News. Thank you for joining us. Subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell thingy. If you haven't, I don't know why, What has? what's holding you back. Okay. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, why haven't you subscribed to our channel? Explain that to us, please. Like, bell, <laughs> and also, if, you, if you're not getting notifications and stuff because YouTube is not telling people that we have shows because YouTube is like, oh, this person told us that they want to get your shows, right? They want to get your videos, but nah, you, we think it's no. And oh, look, oh, they also hit the bell button. But nah, you guys are too controversial. We want to show them mainstream stuff. We want to show them CNN or cat videos or whatever. But even there are people are like, no, we want to see Atheist Republic. And YouTube is like, no, nah, we don't think you want this. They're like, no, please show it to us. We say to you, we want to see Atheist Republic. And YouTube is like, no, we think we know what's better for you than you yourself. So to solve that, link, there's a link in the description, uh, which is to our newsletter. So hopefully some of our, we could email it to you. So hopefully you get some of our content that way. Okay. So yeah, subscribe to our newsletter as well and share, share our videos because you know, we do get demonetized. That's an obvious on every one of our videos. So F that, but we don't care about that anymore, <laughs> but we also get deprioritized and that's even more damaging to us. Deprioritized. What does that mean? That means we're not, we don't show up on the suggested, you know, videos on the right and all that, you know, on the, on people's homepages. And that's how channels grow. Unfortunately we can grow. So we need you guys to share our videos. 